April 20th, 1999. What started as a normal day for many high school students quickly turned into a massacre. Two students, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, led a violent murder-suicide, killing 13 people and injuring countless others. Both physically and mentally, the ripple effects their actions had is shocking. You see it every day. Santa Fe, El Paso, Uvalde, Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, Red Lake. It's almost impossible to truly scale the violence that these two unleashed in the world. But why? What was the cause of their sudden terror? To find this out, why not go directly to the source? The journal of Eric Harris is a direct link to the mind of a killer. And throughout it, one word appears repeatedly. Through the ramblings of this madman, one word seems to hold a lot of importance to Harris. That word is doom. Doom is a first-person shooter made in 1993 by John Romero. In it, you take control of a space marine as you shoot your way through hordes of demons trying to survive the onslaught. Puzzles, fun combat, it's a gem of its time. When it was released, people seemed to love Doom. So much so that it gained a large following and people even began to customize levels of Doom, mining in their own maps called WADs. At the time, this kind of modification took time and a lot of skill so many developers were well respected. Of these developers, someone by the name of Reb Doomer, or Reb for short, made many custom maps for Doom and other games. Reb had opened a website to show off his wads, showcasing his skill at making custom made levels. While these maps were very well made, featuring many handmade game textures and sound effects, they all held a subtle detail as to what kind of person Reb was. Violent imagery and strange messages could be found throughout the maps, going even further beyond the insanity Doom was known for. In all these games, another user going by the name of Vodka, or V for short, was credited as a playtester. It's apparent that these two loved to play Doom and other titles, and enjoyed making new levels for it. However, this simple enjoyment of creating levels to have some fun would soon be revealed to be just the surface of what they use this engine for. Because Reb and B are none other than Harris and Klebold. Over time, as Harris made more wads, they grew in both quality and violence. UAC Labs, for example, seemed to be very important to Harris, as he always protected his work, telling others not to use it as a base for their own mods. But for this map in particular, he seemed to want to protect it. Within the map, hundreds of demons could be found, each with their own unique death animations, which at the time was unheard of in the wild making community. This could lead many to assume that it was just a protective developer who wanted his hard work to be seen as his own, not as someone else's. But things only got worse. On his website, he began to show signs of mental deterioration and violent intent. He posted about weapons he made in detail and even made threats to other students that he went to high school with, calling out names like Brooks Brown in particular. As Brooks writes himself, he remembers having started out as an enemy of Eric and how his parents had called the school following the threat made by Harris. The two later became close friends, with Harris deciding to spare his life on that horrible day, simply telling him to get out of here, go home, in a flat tone. It is through these messages that people began to see Reb as who he truly was, an angry, violent, and mentally unstable man. Through the messages you receive upon running the wads, there is a name for a wad that can no longer be found. That is real doom dot zip. Harris simply asked for anyone who wanted to try out the map to send him an email so they could play it. He would promote this wad throughout all of the maps that he's made, seeming to want everyone to play this one in particular. This wad was different from the other wads Harris had made though. 
Many of the previous wads were very simple. But alongside UAC Labs, this wad is thought to be one of the most detailed Harris had ever made. Within this wad is a one-to-one -one replica of the Columbine High School, completed with character models of Dylan and Eric, unique sound effects, and highly violent graphics and imagery that would take months of work to perfect. Harris had gone over the edge, and he decided to use this very wad to plan the massacre that would lead to countless deaths and many more injuries. From the weapons they used to the improvised explosives they planned to make the cafeteria and or even the entire school explode. It's exactly what Harris and Clabot needed for their plan to work. There's a certain dread that follows having observed this WAD's gameplay. Just to think that something so sick could be found in a game that's simply meant to have fun. What followed the massacre changed the lives of many. Many called for violence in video games to be blamed for this. Games like Doom and Mortal Kombat were scrutinized for their intense violence, many linking these two games to the crimes committed by Harris and Klebold. But there's more to the story than just two kids playing a mature game when they're young. Harris was later diagnosed with psychopathy by the FBI, with Klebold being found as depressed and suicidal. Their journals revealed the key differences between them, with Harris seeing others as vile and useless creatures, while Klebold saw himself as worthless, even resorting to self-harm. Both boys were in very fragile and unstable parts of their lives, so the question remains, were video games the catalyst, or were they simply a part of the vast amount of problems both men had? Correlation or causation? Some court cases from the families of victims, namely one that was filed by the wife of a murdered teacher, claimed that games like Doom and their developers should be held accountable. A ruling of a federal justice threw the case out because he believed the video games or their developers were not responsible for inciting the violence, and that the game's developers had no way of knowing what would happen that day. Therefore, legally, video games are protected by the First Amendment, making them free speech and not liable to any restrictions beyond what was already in place. As for how this affected the entire video game industry, games like Doom, Mortal Kombat, and other violent 90s era games were now under even more fire. Lawsuits, court rulings, and having to defend their works from angry parents and politicians were some of the things that these poor developers faced. Since the early 90s, violent video games had been blamed by many as being bad influences, and since at the time most games were not restricted, young children could unknowingly play one of these games and either become traumatized or desensitized to violence. This challenge to the video game industry in the early 90s would later result in the ESRB being created in 1994 which is a group of board members dedicated to rating video games based on violence and intensity in an effort to ensure that children wouldn't be engaging with violent media when they're too young and hopefully prevent games from becoming an outlet for violence as they were used for in Columbine. But even now, with shootings and other violence on the rise, many question video games' involvement. Some claim that games like Mortal Kombat Doom, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, and others all increase aggression and emotional problems and cause people to gradually become reclusive and violent. Others claim that this so-called evidence proves nothing, as only a select few shootings are actually tied to video games, and that this research was flawed in many ways. Whether or not video games are the cause or just an unfortunate correlation, it's safe to say that Columbine changed the way video games are looked at forever.